Okay, so I think I got the camera angles uh, right here for doing an alignment. And uh, in this view, um, you can see the two IF cans here. You can see the meter in the background. You can see the frequency counter, which I better turn on my signal generator here and get it going. And uh, with the other camera, you just get a big close-up of uh, what's on the meter. That's what I've done, and guess what? We can see both at the same time, if we really want to. So I'm keep an eye on things. Now, I guess I should turn on the radio and get it warming up too. So on off is here. Radio is plugged in, everything is safe, and we'll switch it on. the uh, restriction light bulb flashed on pretty bright there. Like, you know what, this is even a better view like this. You can see when I go to adjust the uh, frequency generator. Very good. Now I don't have the manual for this radio, um, so I'm going to be doing this align alignment um, uh, freehand style if you like, but it's not too complicated uh, to do. You can't go too far wrong if the radio is already working and is fairly well aligned like this one then you don't need any instructions actually to get through this so oh, I better turn on the uh, meter I think you'll see it go, go flying up here as it warms up let's see if that's true yeah, there it goes Settling back down. Okay, I think that settled down. Let's turn a little volume up here. Certainly looks like it's tracking the sound, no doubt about that. And uh, for an IF alignment, you really don't want any signal coming in the antenna except for your signal generator signal. But I'm not going to try to detach or do anything to this antenna here. And also, ideally, uh, you should be feeding the uh, signal from the signal generator, which is on the end of this cable, uh, into a particular grid on one of these tubes. But I'm not going to bother with that either. Again, the radio is aligned already, so if I can leak any of this IF signal I'm going to be inserting in the radio into it, in any way, that's just fine. There we go. So I'm just going to connect it right into the antenna. Sounds like there's a helicopter waiting for me outside. Um, I will tune this to the IF frequency 455. Could be 456. Could be anything really, but 455, 456 are 99% of the time the right frequency. So let's dial that down. Dial it up. Oh. What's that doing there? 369. There we are. Okay, so let's see, 455. It's right on, by the way. But this other signal is at 
three, let's say 365. It's actually a little higher, but let's say 365, 455, 365. That happens to be exactly 90 or 900, and 900 is twice 455. Not a coincidence. So that's an image that's down there. I think that might be the right term for it. So, just there right on 455. Now, there's so much noise coming in at the same time. I don't think the, the signal we're hearing is... Uh, showing up uh, over the noise. So I'll tune somewhere else here. Okay, it's not very good. Boy. And I'm putting out the maximum uh, signal I can pump out right now into it. Oh, you know what? I didn't ground. Ah, 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 ah. Turn that down. I didn't ground the signal generator to the chassis. Well, maybe once I do that. Well, things got a little quiet. There we are. That's a little better. A little bit better. Quiet spot. It's not a nice pure tone, is it? It's kind of crummy. Well, let's let's continue on and see what happens. I'll try retuning the. Uh... Well, see, there's a number of peaks through there. Watch, we'll go up. Let's get the meter in the action here. Okay, here we go. How many peaks? One, two, two pretty clear on the meter there. So that suggests to me something's not lined up quite right. I'm going to get some kind of benefit out of this. Good show. Okay. Okay, now luckily these are capacitors in the IF here that I'm changing. They're easy to tune. Generally my metal screwdriver doesn't have any negative effect. Here we go. Stuck a little bit. Ooh. Okay, just picking it up for maximum. That's one. That's two.
Wow, that made a big difference. And now the last one. Now, now just uh, just in terms of what I'm listening for with my ears, I might as well explain that a little bit. Um, and I'm listening to the high pitch sound, the hiss and the high pitch sound. Let me turn it up again and I'll show you what I'm doing. And what I realize when I hear the higher sounds, forgetting what the meter shows, um, I realize I'm tuning in the sidebands. The higher frequencies are farther out on the sidebands. So the more you tune off the center, the more you hear these higher frequency sidebands. Let me turn this one again. I'll show you what I mean. So I think we're in the middle right now. Okay, I'll tune it off and you'll hear... Yeah, baloney. <laughs> there, okay, so it's very subtle. Okay, so here there's a little more hiss, a little more high frequency stuff here than here. It almost sounds muffled. This is one of the reasons why you can't do this with your ear. See, the meter went up, but your own sensation is that it's actually quieter. I think I'm going to go through them once again, all of them. And uh, double check them here. But generally, this is not the kind of thing you have to go back over again and again. Unless it's way out it's way out. Can't say I've ever had one way out. Also what's important is the frequency on the signal generator carrier and I'm using a thousand cycles per second, thousand hertz. And the gargly sound is interference uh, from other signals being received. Okay, now that, that was a little different. You can make these so sharp in some radios that the tonal quality in the end is poor. Uh, it's, uh, it may not have the high frequency response you really want to hear. So sometimes the very last thing I do is uh, I listen to a radio station, preferably music, and then I adjust them again ever so slightly just to improve the tonal quality if I think that's, uh, that's necessary. So that's the IF done. Uh, I don't think there's anything else for me to tweak with right now. I think the radio's working pretty well. Let's. Let's disconnect it from the signal generator here. Okay, so now all it's working on is the loop antenna. And we are down in my shop surrounded by all kinds of stuff. So uh, nobody cry if we don't pick anything up here. Might get something down around here. Then get a single station. That's probably because the loop antenna is on the wrong angle. So I'm going to carefully re-angle the radio here carefully because it's on. Okay, turn it 90 degrees. Try again. Yes, sir. Go to the e -store at the
They're in there. He's still picking up the 455 tone. So let me knock that way off. There. We won't hear that anymore. Let's go back and hear that one station. But I'm listening to the tonal quality. I think it's just fine. I, I think I think we're done on the alignment. Uh, I think we got quite a good improvement. I was a little surprised how good that was. And uh, now I think this radio is really hot. I think it's really going to work well. That's what I think. So from here, now uh, we're into dealing with this pointer, which has just got me so on edge here. Uh, I'm so sure that it's going to break if I do anything to it. It's a wobbly mess. Boy, oh boy. I wish I could get it off and get it under the microscope and take a close look at this, this point right here and see if it's beginning to crack. But I can't do that. Well, I can. I mean, I have to disconnect this from the string. And, you know, that introduces a whole bunch more problems. I don't want to get into that. Um, well, I'm going to leave it here for a little bit and maybe ponder how to deal with this pointer. Um, and uh, I'm going on to the next uh, next radio. Uh, i got a line up here, as always. Uh, next radio is going to be kind of interesting. Not that this one isn't. This is a beauty. But uh, she's essentially done until I figure out what to do about this pointer, and then it's just clean up. From there, it's a beautiful looking radio though, so I'm pretty happy with that. So thanks for watching, and uh, hey, I'll be on to the next radio uh, very shortly.